got a pretty quick video, hopefully, uh, for you today. And we're covering a pretty basic topic, but it's something that does get overlooked quite a bit. And that is mill thickness and really how mill thickness uh, changes or can change the appearance of the finish. So we are using Superchrome as a sample in this test. And we've got three samples sprayed out here at different mill thicknesses. You've got one that's definitely got some orange peel visible here. You've got one here that actually looks pretty darn good. And one here that's got some orange peel, but it's a little bit tighter pattern. We're gonna go through and uh, actually just double check it against this mill thickness gauge here. Um, let's see here. We've got on this first one, yeah, we're in the uh, kind of four mil range, a little over four mils. That's a little bit heavy. Um, and no wonder you're starting to see some uh, orange peel uh, being visible there. So let's check this one now. Okay, we're at like, you know, just under, we're right around three mils there. And then, and this one actually looks the best, the one in the middle. Let's check this one here finally. And we are under two mils. Um, so normally for most powders, about two to three mils is that target range where you want to be too thin and you start developing a tighter uh, orange peel pattern if you're under two mils, but you also can have um, the potential for being too thin where um, you don't have as much protection. Start going over three mils and that's when, hey, you're getting decent protection there, but the finish may start to suffer a little bit. That's where you start seeing orange peel. Now some powder colors uh, or gloss levels will conceal the orange peel better than others. So really, I mean, to sum this up is, if you don't have a mill thickness gauge, you really should get one. It's a great way to troubleshoot um, anomalies that happen within a finish. First thing you should do is go through and check your mill thickness, see if you're in that range. Second thing is, it really helps develop your technique. So you've got a combination of things going on when you're spraying. You've got gun settings, uh, you've got uh, the number of passes that you make, and then also your hand speed. All those things combined are going to determine what the mill thickness is. If you don't know what the mill thickness is, then there's really no way for you to know how to alter your technique to get the best finish. These are pretty decent units too. These are the ones that I use uh, pretty much every day. For what we're doing here, these make a really great option.